Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar CTV. My name is Damiana and I would like to welcome you in the name of Beekeeping Academy of Slovenia, part of Agriculture Institute of Slovenia and in the name of the city of Ljubljana. I think we all agree that the world is facing an extreme situation this year. But this is the right moment to focus on what we can do to preserve nature and biodiversity. With the aim of marking the third celebration of World Bee Day, we would like to share with you examples of good beekeeping and nature saving practices from Slovenia. I would like to introduce today's first presenter, Mr. Goras Trushnev, Slovenian president and founder of the Urban Beekeepers Association and our beekeeping instructor. Thank you, Damiana, and uh, hello to all the listeners. Uh, my name is Goras, and I will present you on a very short introduction to the urban beekeeping. Usually, it's a very good idea to begin at the beginning, and uh, so will we today. Uh, at the very beginning of the settlements of the first uh, traces of Western civilization in the Middle East, uh, we can find a settlement in the valley of uh, Jordan, in the northeastern uh, part of uh, today's Israel. It's um, a settlement hill called Tel Reho, which is of uh, special interest for us because the first uh, archaeological finds uh, during the ex excavations um, uh, were found there and uh, among the remains of the city which is uh, around 10,000 uh, years old. Um, we found also the first uh, and the oldest uh, uh, clay uh, beehives. Um, the, this was uh, actually a pretty recent discovery, uh, maybe a decade old, and uh, this uh, turned upside down the common knowledge about the urban beekeeping, uh, meaning that the oldest uh, actual finds about the human connection with uh, bees are actually uh, from within the city, which mean, meaning that uh, urban beekeeping is older than actual beekeeping itself, as at least uh, according to the scientific uh, proofs and uh, remains. Uh, not only that, uh, the archaeological uh, clay beehives uh, within the city we found that uh, the urban beekeeping was uh, very well organized uh, within the city. It was uh, an economic activity. Uh, and there are several reasons why the, this clay beehives were put uh, inside of the city. Uh, the first and foremost was that the honey has a really great economical value and uh, the city itself protected this uh, economic activity. Uh, and uh, in today's uh, measures, uh, we, we could say that the um, urban beekeeping and Taylor how contributed uh, significantly to the uh, GDP of the city. So the city itself was uh, protecting uh, the bee house and the bee house took care of their economy. And not only that, the discovery changed, uh, changed the uh, historical significance of uh, some parts of the Old Testament, which was claiming that the land was called uh, Old Israel was called land of milk and honey. And up until this discovery, it was thought that uh, Honey that the uh, Bible referred to was just a kind of a fruit gem, but uh, since this discovery, we know that the ancient uh, inhabitants of the Middle East actually were very good uh, beekeepers. And this is a um, contemporary drawing of how this uh, clay um, beekeeping looked like, and uh, not surprisingly, uh, not far away from this, we can still find today the same te uh, technology. So this is this were really the uh, this is this were really the clay beehives within the city. And now we will jump a couple of uh, thousand years uh, ahead and uh, make a short stop in the Middle Ages in the Roslyn Chapel, which is uh, probably familiar to all the readers of Dan Brown. 
Uh, his book, uh, uh, Da Vinci Code, was very popular maybe a couple of years ago, and this uh, chapter uh, features uh, very prominently uh, in this uh, story. And uh, why is it significant to us? Is that during the renovation of this medieval church, uh, they found out that the architects who planned this uh, building left an empty space within these uh, columns that supported the structure intentionally for the bees to settle and inhabit these uh, columns. Of course, uh, this uh, stone material is too heavy to actually work with bees, but uh, this discovery is a proof of uh, the significance and uh, importance that uh, people of all centuries and all civilizations put uh, on the bees and uh, living uh, the, in the proximity with bees was considered uh, something like a very uh, good and beneficial for uh, everyone. And unfortunately, from the medieval times, we mainly have uh, secondary sources uh, and proofs. And this is uh, one of the graphic um, from the city of Amsterdam, which was at the end of 17th century, probably the biggest city, or at least uh, economically most important in the Western world. And uh, we can see here the collecting of bees swarm into, within the city of uh, Amsterdam. And um, from the same time period, uh, there are also illustrations uh, which can show, which can also always show, or the connection between the men and bees, also within the uh, city structures. And uh, now, from the medieval time, you know, also Slovenians have a very uh, important. Uh, um, uh, important remnant. Uh, this is a graphic of a small settlement uh, very close to the um, capital, today's capital, Ljubljana. And um, the most important part of, about this graphic uh, is the, that this is the first depiction of the bee house in uh, the territory of Slovenia. So uh, it's from Janus Valdasor's book, the glory of the Duchess of Ukraine. And uh, we can find this um, uh, log to beehives, uh, which are, set, which are um, beehives settled within a bee house, which is settled within the human settlement, not close, not uh, too far away from the old capital city. So meaning that the oldest, also the oldest, uh, um, Artifact or the oldest proof of uh, human uh, civilization's connection with the bees is uh, connected to the city. Um, we also have, uh, as mentioned, secondary sources like the, the emblem of uh, the Academic of Science of Arts. Uh, which was established not far, uh, not uh, long after the French uh, French Academy, and uh, the, we can still find today this uh, painting in the main hall of the Academy of Sciences, Science of Arts. And uh, the most important thing about this is the size of the beehive, which they put into the first plane in the, in the, this uh, perspective. It's even bigger than the, the Castle Hill of uh, Ljubljana, meaning that uh, uh, it signifies the importance that uh, even our academic uh, ancestors put on the bees, and they put the bees even in the longer Latin name they put the, they have for their uh, institution, because uh, the bees were for them like a symbol of uh, knowledge and uh, work and ethics. And uh, <clears throat> this, this also signifies by the emblem they chose to on the name. And from approximately the same period, uh, we can encounter uh, Mr. Anton Jansha, who we will celebrate in uh, two days' time. Uh, actually, his birthday was chosen to be uh, the World Bee Day, and this is not uh, a coincidence. Uh, he was uh, actually the first uh, modern uh, 
uh, modern beekeeper and um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, he could also be considered as one of the first modern urban beekeepers since he was operating mainly um, in Vienna, which was at the time the capital of this uh, region and uh, the biggest city. And, uh, the, the interesting thing about the big, uh, this uh, depiction of his uh, teaching is uh, hidden in the upper west, upper uh, right corner. You can find the bee house, uh, which may at the first on the first look look like uh, just an ordinary bee house, but uh, I think that the painter was trying to tell us something. Uh, this bee house that is depicted here is divided in two parts. And on one part, we can find this uh, uh, old, old type of uh, um, old type of bee uh, nests, and on the bigger part, we can find uh, his uh, bee, uh, bee house, which uh, the predecessors of modern uh, bee house that we are still using today. So. The, uh, Mr. Anton Janczak, who is standing in the middle of the picture, is also standing in the middle of this bee house, uh, meaning that he is, he is the person who is between old type of uh, uh, beekeeping and the new and the part of uh, modern beekeeping. That 90% uh, of his teachings is still uh, absolutely valid to, to them. Um, Idria is a, a small mining town in the western part of Slovenia, and uh, interestingly enough, and it's all Slovenia's first industrial city, oldest, uh, oldest city, it, um, celebrated for 500 years of existence a couple of decades ago. And interestingly enough, there we, we can find also the oldest urban bee uh, house in uh, Slovenia, still standing. Uh, it is uh, positioned not the far away from the city, city uh, center, and uh, it was in uh, pretty bad condition in the previous decades. And uh, after renovation, uh, you can uh, visit it uh, now. Today, it looks uh, beautiful and. Uh, if you visit uh, Idria, you will really see that it's, it's uh, settled uh, actually almost in the center of the city, not maybe 50 meters from the main square, town square. So, um, I mean, every generation uh, uh, imagines that it, it, it's inventing itself, uh, everything anew, but uh, basically the red line of my presentations today that uh, it will be that uh, urban beekeeping is actually nothing new. It existed uh, as long as we can we know about the uh, as long as there are uh, urban settlements, there is also urban beekeeping present. Jože Plechnik, uh, uh, who has also worked in Vienna and studied and worked, uh, but in his uh, second part of life chose Ljubljana as his. Uh, uh, working place and living uh, city and immediately after he bought uh, the house that he renovated he also put a big house on the garden of his, uh, his house which you can visit it today uh, it is of course innovative uh, as it was everything that he, that he has done but it, it's also an homage to the classic slovenian uh, big house so he's also as an architect standing between tradition and uh, modernity. And uh, his talent is seen in every little de detail of uh, the bee house that you can visit today. And it's uh, today, uh, it's settled also in the city center, of course. And he bought this house. This was uh, a periphery for Ljubljana. Uh, but after the uh, urbanization, after the Second World War, the city engulfed a large number of beehives that were uh, first uh, uh, settled on the perimeter of the city. Uh, this is another, the, his second uh, bee house that he designed, and it's uh, the summer residence of the Czech uh, president. Uh, you can still, you can also visit it today. It's uh, maybe 50 miles western of the uh, park today.
And now we really approach the beginning of the modern modern urban leafkeeping with uh, me and our colleague Mr. Jean Potcon, who was working at the French uh, National Opera. He put his uh, big house, big house on the roof uh, of the opera where he was working as a set, as a set designer. And uh, surprisingly enough, when he planned to move them to his summer house, he discovered that they were full uh, of honey. And, uh, not only that, the honey was uh, perfect with, uh, with quality, and uh, he decided just to leave them on the roof and uh, continue keeping uh, bees on the city roof. And uh, today, uh, Paris is one of the metropoles of. Uh, uh, it all it uh, quickly spread to other institutions in uh, Paris. Uh, this is of course one of the financial one, and uh, this interestingly enough, uh, finance uh, finances and uh, these are historically very much connected. Urban beekeeping became um, like a, a, a tourist uh, significance in uh, the. In Paris, and soon after, uh, other world metropoles followed, like London, with, uh, which is a very, also a very green city with uh, its tiny squares and green roofs. Uh, of course, we have very recently installed a couple of big houses on the rooftop of uh, Berlin Parliament. And uh, soon after that, uh, we uh, also, can start to speak about modern beekeeping in the uh, urban beekeeping in Ljubljana with uh, Sanka Ljubljana as the pioneering uh, institution. Uh, next year, we will celebrate the 10th year of uh, the house on the rooftop of Sanka Ljubljana. This is another real of uh, the city from the same position. And uh, when my colleague started there, uh, Mr. Franz Petrocic with Hani, he encountered a lot of prejudice uh, how this uh, urban honey from uh, the city of Ljubljana will be black uh, and poisonous and uh, filled with uh, heavy metals and uh, lead and other uh, remains. And uh, when Ljubljana uh, competed for the title of Green Capital, they invested in a very thorough analysis of the honey from Zankirodom and uh, in uh, the referential laboratory from Belenen, which uh, did a thorough analysis, chemical of the Zankirodom honey, uh, discovered that the, the air for every parameter there it was less than detection level. So it, it, it could be safely said that this uh, honey from the city of Rudana is perfectly healthy and with, the, with the no traces of uh, pesticides, uh, heavy metals and other poisonous materials. Uh, but still, uh, urban keep, beekeeping today, we sometimes feel that we have to, um, to speak to every individual uh, and you and uh, convince uh, individually uh, every customer that our honey is perfect and uh, perfectly healthy. And uh, I think it's. Uh, since we can detect the uh, rise of popularity of urban beekeeping and uh, general popularization, uh, we can say that somehow we succeeded. Also, of course, we are sending our honey uh, and other product, products regularly to the analysis. And not only that, uh, the, the same honey that I was calling that uh, I was uh, speaking uh, to you about Franz Petrocic received the uh, gold medal at our most important uh, agricultural fair. So uh, this is one of the proof that uh, we are on the right uh, track. Mm. Interestingly enough, uh, the second uh, institution in Ljubljana that were, was interested to put big house on the roof was uh, another cultural center, meaning uh, that it's good to support culture because it's uh, probably uh, more willing to test the new waters and the more avant-garde in the ideas. Uh, uh, I put a couple of big houses, big houses on the rooftop of uh, cultural center in uh, Moscow, uh, 
uh, uh, special district, and uh, their honey was uh, also excellent, and I received some prizes for it. And then I discovered that uh, there is a rise of interest in, in having uh, their own uh, bee house and in uh, individual individuals and institutions in Lugan, and I developed a, a service called uh, Rent a Hive. So I'm renting the house to different institutions and uh, uh, private persons, and they can. Uh, I manage this big house, and they can collect uh, their own honey. Uh, so the, my first next customer was the hotel park in uh, the strict city center. You can see on the rooftop. We started with two big houses, and now we are, we have four. We were a bit skeptical about the height. It's on the, on the 14th floor, and, but uh, the first year that I put the big house there, it was my best uh, location in the city. So. Uh, it was also a mark that maybe our uh, anthropocentric view of what is good for this and what is not is maybe not always the correct way to approach uh, this urban big Um Of course, Hotel saw, uh, Park saw uh, an opportunity to promote um, themselves through the, their own honey. You can sell, you can buy it at the reception still. Um, we connected also with Urban Planning Institute in uh, Pernau uh, and uh, some, uh, some private companies which saw the possibility of uh, individualizing these big hires. Uh, I'm also teaching individuals uh, who are maybe hoping to, to take over the beekeeping in a couple of years by being present when I'm working with these. And um, we also put the big house on the community garden on Kraj uh, which also had the, like this uh, learning uh, possibility and uh, people who had gardens there were, uh, were more than happy to have uh, the proximity of bees. And, uh, as you can see, uh, this is location just the opposite of the main uh, train station which is probably the most heavy with traffic and uh, you can see as uh, honey as light as uh, possible. Radio Slovenia saw the opportunity to promote their three, uh, three uh, new networks uh, and to put the, by putting the beehives on the rooftop and of course uh, having the honey as a gift. Uh, I'm collaborating with the uh, Court of Audit in the, as, as you see, perhaps the most organized point of uh, Ljubljana. And uh, our main energy company, Petrol, uh, who is trying towards more green politics, uh, green energy also put the uh, big house on the rooftop. Uh, of course, in their mission towards more uh, doing uh, more uh, steps towards uh, uh, green politics and towards uh, better environmental practices. All these companies, what was their what's their motivation? They are looking uh, for to do something good for the environment, uh, to as, as, as mentioned, to, to make a few steps towards more greener uh, politics, to do something good for the environment, to, and also to promote themselves through the market merchandising of. Uh, the honey that is uh, produced on their premises. Um, our most recent and fruitful collaboration is with the uh, bank, uh, Escabe Bank, which is uh, located itself in the city center of Ljubljana. And as I mentioned, uh, financial institutions were connected with big house bees uh, throughout the, the history. Uh, by mimicking the economic behavior, these are also a symbol of uh, savings and uh, thinking ahead and uh, organized, being organized, uh, doing something good for the environment, uh, being uh, environmentally conscious and uh, protecting your assets, of course. And not only that, uh, SKB Bank invested also in the design of this big house. Uh, because uh, by paying an homage to the 
Uh, art history of Slovenia, more, uh, more to be more precise, of the three greatest architects uh, from the Slovenian history, uh, Plechnik, Vurnik, and Fabiani, and you can see the, the, their houses uh, in the vicinity, uh, uh, in the houses that this uh, design is paying homage to, in the very vicinity of the SKB Bank in the city center. Um, of course, we are spreading uh, their collaboration with the bank also to the other fields. They helped us uh, with the publication of the book, and of course, this uh, honey is very uh, uh, prized. Um, uh, as I mentioned, this connection uh, with, between design and uh, beekeeping is not uh, so far fetched. Uh, uh, architects and designers all over the world uh, are inspired also by these who are excellent builders and engineers. Uh, they are making their perfect uh, little cells and uh, inhabit places in complete darkness, uh, being at that at the same time a perfect mathematicians and engineers. And uh, it's no wonder that uh, these are, uh, as mentioned, inspiration. To engineers and designers. This is one example from uh, Norway. These big houses are, uh, are located on the top of their main city market. And this uh, this connection was also an inspiration uh, for workshops with uh, Ljubljana's uh, Faculty of Architecture, which uh, helps us design these uh, stands for the you know, Bihars, which you can find on the city perimeter in the on our main park, uh, Tivoli. Uh, they are managed by our colleague, Daimar Skravan, and you can find his uh, Bihars on the net address. Uh, not only that, um, uh, this um, <coughs> location was chosen intentionally because it was uh, in a bit of neglected part of park, and uh, we, this uh, settlement of uh, the, the stands, uh, the whole micro location, uh, when the, we inhabited it with the bees, it uh, revived this uh, part, part, part of the park. And you can rarely, really, rarely find this spot without any uh, without any people or citizen uh, sitting there and watching and observing and just uh, soaking in the environment and enjoying being in the vicinity of the beast. And uh, this exact picture is uh, from a you know, barbecue that our association had at this location a couple of years ago. And, uh, we, we really, uh, each time that I visit uh, with a colleague or a colleague visits this location, we really, uh, we were never, were never really alone, which uh, is also proof that this was more than a successful student project. Another project uh, that we uh, planned uh, at this workshop, uh, the Faculty of Architecture, you can find today in the Botanical Garden of Ljubljana. It is um, also a modern interpretation of a classical Slovenian bee house. And, uh, I think it's also a proof that you can do a modern uh, installation with uh, quite traditional materials and also uh, to put a modern um, uh, building uh, in the city which demands a bit different uh, morphological solutions than maybe a countryside. Um, we continue our collaboration with uh, different faculties and students, which uh, still see a challenge uh, to be inspired by bees and to find new solutions, and uh, uh, the, to find also the solutions how to make this uh, company of bees in the city a pleasant uh, experience and at the same time safe. Uh, uh, safe experience for everybody involved. And, uh, this is one of the most recent uh, solutions. Um, of course, uh, the honey that is uh, produced within the city can never be uh, sold uh, in large quantities uh, because uh, 
city is rich with uh, bee forage, uh, and yet at the same time it doesn't uh, offer a really large quantities of nectar or mana. So we can claim that our honey is some kind of a boutique uh, produce. Uh, this, uh, and also for these purposes, uh, this honey can be uh, given as a protocol gift uh, to, to special customers and uh, our students help us design this kind of gift, which is also an uh, homage to the city of Ignana, with, 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 with circuit, and so on. And um, as you can see, uh, this example, this uh, urban beekeeping offers a really uh, plethora of uh, inspiration to think differently and to uh, make a bit more uh, dynamic, modern uh, design to sell this uh, process to maybe a new uh, uh, type of customers. <clears throat> And I think uh, that I'm approaching the end of my presentation. Uh, we, we are also thinking about the Ljubljana bee path and how to make it more approachable to the youngest audience possible and to, how to raise awareness of the children about the bees and other pollinators in the city. And on the, one of the workshops, we invented this uh, uh, special challenge uh, for the kids uh, to visit the bee path and collect the stamps which are uh, designed for every uh, location uh, different. Uh, you can find more about the activities of our Urban Beekeepers Association uh, on our webpage. Uh, some of it is in uh, English and uh, we are trying to uh, put the Online the information, which is uh, which can be also communicated uh, not only in Slovenian but internationally, and of course uh, for our activities we are also using uh, social networks. So one of you are more than welcome to uh, join us there, and put uh, information, and, uh, get in touch with us with us at all uh, times. And that's all for me. Uh, thank you for you tuning in, and I'll pass uh, my place to the next guest. Related to examples of good practice from Slovenia, we will get to know the bee path in Ljubljana, which will be presented by Mrs. Marushka Markovic, Senior Advisor for Rural Development from City of Ljubljana. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm very pleased to share the story of bee path and bees in Ljubljana with you. Uh, I thank uh, Goras that he made some sort of introduction for my topic and I think that I will just upgrade it with some ideas and something how can everything be done in this uh, strict environment as the city government and I think that many things can be, um, can be done if uh, we step together and we find some uh, nice synergy effect. So the bee in Ljubljana, uh, why the bee in Ljubljana? It is very interesting that Ljubljana actually has 275 square kilometers of area, but the two thirds of the whole area is actually covered with uh, rural area and the forest covers 108 square kilometers and agriculture land 107 square kilometers. So we see that this is the perfect environment for bees we have 828 farms, uh, there are approximately very small farms, but they manage to cover up to 30% of food self-sufficiency. So 
this is the connection between the bees and the food production and everything. So this is the main concern of the city. If you see this, uh, actually the uh, the, um, the the ortho photo uh, print of Ljubljana, you can see that it is very green. We have very different areas, and that the urban uh, part, uh, the strict urban part, is um, um, embraced actually with the green areas that. Uh, and this is this presents the great and uh, opportunity for bees to prosper uh, even in the strict center, the strict urban center of the city. Um, when we were thinking about how to introduce the bee to Ljubljana, it was not difficult because the history and uh, historically the Ljubljana is connected to the bees. And also, it has a very long tradition of beekeeping in, in Ljubljana as well as in the whole other part of Slovenia. And um, uh, we decided to take the bee as an indicator of healthy environment. And uh, we managed uh, to uh, prove that the city, as Boras already said, it is very healthy. Uh, the bee, the, the honey is um, healthy as well. It's clean. It's very it's of good quality and uh, uh, the whole area of uh, the city um, offers to bees a very good uh, feeding area. So the 40% of the area is covered with forest. We have more than 35%, 35,000 uh, trees in the city. And uh, as you can see, it is in city because we have more than 542 square meters per person, per citizen uh, of green areas in the city. Uh, food production it is mainly focused on this two thirds of the rural area, as I said. But uh, uh, we have uh, 34 hectares of orchards. Uh, even we have we, we also have strawberries, and uh, strange enough, but we have six hectares of asparagus uh, as well. So this is something very interesting. A part of this agriculture area we have, uh, as we call it, the cultural phenomenon. So the urban beekeeping. And we, uh, on the base of everything that I, I just mentioned, we created a new touristic product, the bee pet. Uh, at the moment, at the beginning, it was uh, some sort of the idea what to, how to present actually bees to, to the city, how to deal with it. And we went to different fields of, uh, uh, of content. So, we started with history, of course, as Boras mentioned, it is the bee was the symbol of, uh, of um, uh, banks and we saw that we have a very nice biodiversity in the city. Uh, we have a lot of uh, possibilities from ed ethnology and cultural anthropology, so there are there is a base of uh, knowledge and, and heritage uh, present there. We have a lot of possibilities to develop, so we have a possibility uh, we um, realized that the urban area um, desires or <clears throat> dictates uh, the form. So we cannot present the traditional apiary in the city. That is why it was so important to collaborate with the architecture, with the Faculty of Agriculture, uh, Architecture, and to develop uh, different forms that fit into this urban area. Uh, education was something that was very important for us, so we instantly knew that we have to start with the young ones, so we started with the uh, programs for the kindergartens and uh, of course uh, we, dis uh, we um, decided to upgrade different API products. Boras already mentioned the protocolar uh, 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 function of the honey. But we didn't stop there. We wanted to have something more. So now we are very proud of our, one of our beekeepers who developed the special line of uh, honey wine and uh, honey sparkling meat. Of course, tourism is something that connects everything and the story behind the bee pet and the tourism is something that uh, has a, a perspective in the, in the future. And I think that uh, this will also be uh, the element that will connect all the stakeholders that are not connected in this in this story of being Ljubljana. We started with BPET and we realized that the BPET is actually a product. So we 
This, just now we developed this uh, cover item, a uh, cover uh, symbol of uh, of Ljubljana, of uh, the bee in Ljubljana. You can see it uh, in the um, lower right uh, angle. Um, from the beginning, uh, we tried to re um, achieve the synergy. So we started with uh, double approach, so the bottom-up and top-down approach. This is very important. So we start with the base, we start to talk with the people, we started to talk with the Keepers Association. This was the first step. And then the municipality realized that without any um, networking or helping or, or connecting, well, uh, the whole thing will not develop as it should. So this is why we started to work closely also with the municipality. We are very pleased that we had the support of the mayor. You can see it on the upper uh, picture. And uh, in time, we managed to, um, in, to attract uh, different departments. The most important is actually the department with, where I work with and where the uh, idea uh, started to uh, develop. and. Uh, um, actually started to uh, get uh, um, to make sense. So it was the Department for our Environmental Protection and Section for Rural Development. It is very important to have the Department for Economic Affairs. In our case, it is important because they handle the care of uh, green area. Then, of course, Department of Urbanism that allows us or dictates us uh, where it is possible to build the apiaries, to build the um, beehives. Uh, of course, the Department for Real Estate Affairs, where we get the information uh, where the area is uh, suitable for the bee, uh, beehives and apiaries. And of course, the Department for Principal Development and Education. This one is the most important one. As I mentioned, we started with the uh, with a very young uh, uh, age uh, uh, of children, so from the age two to, to, to five, and then also to the elementary school. One of the most important uh, uh, um, stakeholders is the civil society. So the local action group that was created through, during our work, and uh, we are still working with different stakeholders. In 2015, uh, within the um, different activities uh, going on uh, within the Green Capital of Europe 2016, we created and established BIPED and we connected two strategic contents. So uh, I, was, I started my presentation with, uh, uh, with the rural area, so the food self-sufficiency is strongly connected to the bees and of course the preservation of biodiversity. We, we um, said that we need some goals, so for rural uh, areas we want to increase the development of beekeeping in the municipality of Ljubljana. We offered different uh, possibilities to beekeepers, we created the whole system of support, so educational system, financial support system and, co and, uh, and also co-financing co of uh, five beekeepers. Uh, associations. We realized at the beginning that the development of urban beekeeping should be a bit different. So the focus should be in, on security, awareness raising, of course, promotion, education of citizens, and regulation and monitoring. This is why we developed some sort of um, regulations or, or um, some sort of uh, directions how to keep bees in the city what is important, and of course, uh, uh, three years ago, we established a cooperation with uh, fire uh, station and, of course, uh, and with um, critical center, uh, and uh, emergency uh, SOS line was established for uh, keeping swarms in the, in the city, uh, for preventing the, um, the fear of citizens now they can always call the 112 number and uh, we have a number we have a group of seven beekeepers and they are prepared to collect the swarm in the city and the citizens are slowly uh, getting used to the idea that they are coexisting and co-living with uh, with the bees uh, i mentioned the development of new products gorest uh, said that it is a very 
uh, wide uh, opportunity for uh, for um, design also uh, to use the different elements of uh, beekeeping and also a different product and pedagogical programs, as I already mentioned, so up in kindergarten and the educational programs for elementary schools. This is the whole, some sort of holistic approach to the beekeeping in the city. If you look at the bee pet, it is a, an actual physical pet. You can walk from one uh, point to another, learn about the, the history, learn about the biodiversity, if you want to see the whole one, it will take you the whole day uh, because it is 14 kilometers long. But you can just visit one point with another or take a tourist guide and uh, just listen to the story of the bees in the city. It is a network. It is very important to say that we managed to collaborate with 35, more than 35 different stakeholders from the educational uh, institutions, cultural institutions, companies, uh, NGOs, and this is the, the actually the heart of the of the BPEC. It is a, an educational program for the seniors, for the young people, so everybody is getting some sort of knowledge out of it uh, with different promotional activities, different uh, activities and uh, uh, lectures uh, through uh, different uh, um, opportunities and it is also a think tank and an incubator. Uh, I'm happy that uh, Goras was uh, is actually one of the uh, examples how everything uh, uh, started. Uh, he developed uh, an idea through one of our educational programs as well. And it is a movement. It is not just the 35 stakeholders that are uh, thinking about developing different ideas, different programs and so on, but there are people um, that uh, join our network, our movement uh, through different activities that we have from um, Maliferous Plant Day to Honey Day in the center and uh, this is keeping the idea of the bees in the city alive. Um, I would just like to point out that we incorporate in BPAD different uh, educational uh, activities that are uh, um, directed from the Slovenian Beekeepers Association. So these are the educational uh, circles for uh, uh, primary schools uh, where children start to, from age 10 or something like that. And then they develop or the, that get, they get the knowledge to the, their educational program. And at the end, we can say that uh, with some uh, smaller help that are uh, actually prepared for the um, uh, beekeeping, uh, uh, individual beekeeping. So this is the important, this is one of the examples of uh, association of uh, Bari, one area of uh, Ljubljana. Um, there are many locations when you can see that uh, the beekeepers uh, keep the, their beehives uh, on the roofs uh, of the city. Uh, it is actually the most safe, uh, the, the safest uh, way. But uh, even if you, uh, but if you have enough, uh, enough knowledge, you can put your beehive in your garden. Because Ljubljana still has a lot of uh, individual houses with the gardens, and this gives the opportunity also for beekeeping in the in the city of uh, in the city of the, uh, of Ljubljana. Um, Goras mentioned that the uh, SKB Bank uh, or the OTP Bank uh, uh, have uh, the, the beehives on, on the roof on, on the right, the, the, the most urban part of the, of the city. Uh, it is not difficult to have bees in the city uh, like this because uh, in the line of three kilometers, uh, which is the distance, as you know, uh, for bees to to pass uh, for, uh, um, when they keep their uh, when they're um, they are picking their uh, uh, honey and uh, uh, pollen, uh, it is uh, a lot of there are a lot of green areas, a lot of uh, tree areas where uh, city uh, where they get their uh, pasture. Uh, in the city of Ljubljana, with the cooperation with the botanical garden, a lot of maliferous trees are planted during the new renovation of the city, and they are uh, creating a new picture of the city as well. 
all these activities that I mentioned uh, um, led to the fact that the uh, Slovenian uh, Beekeepers Association uh, awarded Ljubljana with the title of the kindest municipality to the bees in 2017 and 2019. And this opened our door also to the Europe story, if I can call it like this. The urban program for cities on the European level recognized the bee pet and the, all the things that we do for the bees uh, as the good practice. And uh, through the program of transfer networks, we got the opportunity to transfer the idea to five different uh, cities. And uh, this is our uh, web page and also a um, um, social media page. So you can find us there because we, we have a lot of activities uh, going on in five cities uh, through, um, during the celebration of 20, uh, 20 for May. So in two days, there will be a lot of information what is going on in different cities. Um, so we are the lead partner. The project is going to uh, last till the June of 2021. We have Amarant in Portugal, we have Budapest, the felt district that is the, the greenest district of Budapest. We have Bitgoszcz in Poland, that it was used to be a chemical uh, center of chemical produ uh, production. And then we have Cesena in Italy and Nea Profundida in Greece with 3E. <laughs> so the goals uh, actually was to promote the importance of bees and biodiversity. And of course, the food safety preservation. Uh, we wanted to um, um, create the promotional uh, activities that will promote and uh, stimulate people to get to know the honeybees as well as other pollinators, the wild pollinators, to create the international network of bee friendly cities. So, if perhaps some of you that is listening to us today find themselves as a somebody that could approach our network, we will be more than pleased. And of course, to transfer the platform from Ljubljana to other cities. Um, so the mainstreaming of urban beekeeping, I think it will be um, our goal, our, our, our uh, wish in the next uh, uh, programming period as well. We are now preparing a new strategy of uh, beekeeping um, in, in Ljubljana, so uh, I think that many, many new stories will, uh, will come up and uh, uh, I think that we, uh, when we learn a lot of the bees, we won't be just standing behind the glass uh, observing them, but we will join up them as well and touch them and everything and we will conquer the fear. So thank you for, uh, for your attention and uh, yeah, hope to see you, perhaps some of you in uh, some new stories. Thank you. From practical beekeeping, we will look at the broader importance of raising awareness of biodiversity. Mrs. Nina Ilic will share her expertise with us. She cooperates with the City of Ljubljana in the international project Big Pet Me. Uh, thank you, Damiana. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Damiana said, I will introduce you some uh, pedagogical approach, some uh, insight of how we do it and what do we uh, want to show. Uh, for the starters, I will uh, share with you this short video about Mudeferre's educational garden.
Yeah. So, uh, as you can see, uh, this Mary Ferris Educational Garden has a shape that um, that shows connection to bees. It's about um, uh, raising awareness, and it includes a program too. Uh, it goes on two branches. One is for uh, children uh, in our uh, pedagogical programs. And the other branch goes for um, gardeners, for adult generations, um, which um, includes the knowledge of uh, ecological gardening and uh, growing plants and why is biodiversity so important and why should, should we uh, save the caterpillar? Uh, we cannot hate caterpillar and like the butterfly. It's all connected. So um, uh, that was about it. It's uh, actually the cooperation with the municipality of Ljubljana. Um, they um, make it happen. <laughs> okay, then the other part of our programs uh, uh, for children is the Api Kindergarten for the youngest. It goes... Um, uh, well, I will tell about it a little bit later. The other branch is uh, for primary school. It's uh, Natural Cultural Science Day for children. Uh, I will go straight to the point. The concept uh, we consider in is uh, human development, personality development, uh, cognitive learning, curriculum in kindergarten. The important thing is we um, measure all of it in our programs, in our preparations. Then it goes to pedagogical principles. We um, think about social socialization, sensory motor phase of development in when it goes to um, kindergarten children. And of course, curriculum in primary school, uh, where we uh, consider what the children need, what the teachers that work with them need. Uh, on these pictures on the left, you can see it's not like um, nights of the round table. It's about testing of uh, possible intolerance of propolis. And then we show all our hands whether we are okay with it. Uh, we focus the most on education and educational needs of children. And the first thing is, of course, safety. Um, the first one of the first steps was cooperation with public kinder, kindergartens uh, and of course cooperation with public schools and the uh, um, big thing uh, was teaching educators we must uh, if we want to share the knowledge if we want them to work with children in safe way we have to teach them how to do it and what to show and um, do with them in their programs. Uh, when it comes to the smallest of children, like these um, pictures here, you ca uh, we cannot forget about their parents. 
uh, that is uh, one of the thing. The other thing is when we work with so young people, we most certainly can reach their parents too. So you know, in some way, Afri kindergartens reach deeper than uh, working with children in primary school. Uh, the most important things are experience, empathy, and creativity. We must encourage that, encourage that. we must develop that, we must um, promote that. Um, the next thing is the importance of choosing the right methodology. Um, it is not appropriate uh, when we're working with children to just lecture them. It's not interesting it's boring it's not lasting knowledge so because the long-term knowledge is obtained from one's own interests and desires and is not imposed we must find and use the way to touch children to reach their emotions to um, motivate them to want to explore more to want to learn more to know more um, the next important thing in our programs is integration of life and practice. You have to combine those two, not uh, let it um, develop separately because it's not um, optimum. Then promoting the mental activities is one of the really important things. Mental activity is a fundamental condition for human, especially for child development. And uh, at least etiquette near this, um, I will, it's, um, it's a white, um, white um, thing. I will just um, point out the, uh, the points here we use uh, because the knowledge is the key. First, we have to know about the bees, the, not just this, um, Apis mellifera carnica, but also um, considering biodiversity, the solitary bees, the other bees, the other um, insects uh, that work for us in our gardens and in, in nature, um, then you should, we should uh, teach children um, to get to know those insect, insects a little bit better than is um, common because when they understand them they can recognize them they can um, easy it's more easy way to um, ensure a safety when we are dealing with them uh, then um, the important thing see, thing is of course rules of good behavior near a fire a must do list uh it um it's it says about where from which side to to come to a fiery what does the bee do when she flies over you um and things like that and the most important thing what to do if bees find you suspicious or dangerous to their home and family how to react why to react that way and um how to um react if uh, some someone gets stung by bee. So this was uh, pretty much uh, for this <laughs> snap introduction in our API programs, uh, pedag pedag pedagogical approach. <laughs> uh, it, um, I could talk a, a lot more, but just to um, present this the, the approach we used. We will end our webinar with an insight into bee tourism as an opportunity for development of ecological and sustainable tourism with our AP Tourist Instructor, Professional Tourist Guide, author of the 
educational program for certified B guide, Mrs. Dominica Ridney Trippel. Okay. Okay, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk tourism. So, um, BIPAT in Ljubljana is in general a learning part where visitors learn about the beekeeping heritage in Ljubljana and uh, all the importance of bees of our survival. That's the main theme we were listening about. But uh, this BIPAT was quickly become also known as a tourist part as well. So, the important but not so well known fact in uh, is in that Slovenia has a very, very unique form of tourist guide. It is called RP Tourist Guide or B Guide in short. And few of these guides also guide along the park in Ljubljana. So, whenever you see someone wearing this uh, yellow identity card, you just met one of uh, our guys and you can ask him or her everything about that depart in general. Uh, if you want to learn something more about Ljubljana depart, you can just click this uh, link above and you will get a lot of more information as you heard so far. Uh, of course, you can choose different lengths of the tour and visit local suppliers, heritage places, tourist points and nature spots. Uh, on the left you can, you can see uh, one of our producers with a honey sparkling wine. Then you have a group of uh, funny guys in uh, City Park Tivoli when there are also beehives. And we have also a lot of uh, good bee shops. Uh, one is in the middle of the center of Ljubljana and you can see that you can also get uh, honey from the tap, not beer but honey if you choose. And of course, uh, such unexpected phenomena as an epidemic of COVID-19 gave us a bit of a push. We discovered the worlds of virtual guiding and made, so-called made by ourselves, different promotion. So we prepared a few short clips or highlights as we decided to name them. They're easy to make, user-friendly, simple and quite effective promotion of the path.
Okay, that was a short introduction to Vipat. And of course, Ljubljana is one of the Europe capital city with big ecological and sustainable tourism potential. When you do the Vipat, you will find nature with its biodiversity, even in the city, gastronomic providers who use homegrown ingredients and rich cultural heritage, and combination of those factors will give you the experience of an urban beekeeping provider in the very core itself. So you can see a bit of nature on the left, gastronomy. Uh, in this case, this is some kind of panna cotta um, combined with uh, honey from Ljubljana. In Slovene language, it goes like the Medina Sturjenka. It will kill you before you pronounce it. And then you have a cultural heritage also with the sign of uh, our apis modifera karnica. And down there again, uh, guys, boys and girls, uh, with this experience of urban beekeeping provider. On this photo, exactly Boras, the beehives in uh, 14th floor of Hotel Park in the middle of Ljubljana. Of course, there are opportunities of the niche markets in Ljubljana also. Bee tourism is sometimes called niche tourism. One can say this is a mixture of cultural heritage, green, sustainable, and ecological tourism. Whatever you want, you can push in this combination. We see the opportunities of the niche market for different groups of visitors, especially we are uh, looking for those uh, third moments with tourist groups classic or tailor-made content for them, and for the expert groups, creation of professional contacts because we want to cooperate with those people uh, again and again. So uh, the line is not interrupted. Then on the seventh slide, um, finally, we think uh, it's okay if you think big sometimes and use all the important facts in interpretation as a tourist guide. For example, we prepared an interview with Grand Duchess Maria Theresa. She was the one established beekeeping school in Vienna in 1769 and installed Mr. Anton Jansha, who was a guy from Slovenia, from then Carniola, as the first official teacher of beekeeping. This is a story interpreted in this interview but uh, we will show you the link. You can use this link when we stop with our presentation because it's nine minutes long. That's an interesting thing. And like this, you have in the middle, uh, one of the Maria Teresa portraits. This one can be found in City Museum of Ljubljana. On the right side, you have uh, my colleague Marieta Turkman Kravar. She is from Zagreb. She is a tourist guide for the city of Zagreb. Uh, and in this uh, film, she portrayed the role of Maria Teresa. And on the left, uh, me, like a journalist, talking to uh, Her Majesty about what's going on right now and what happened about 244 years ago when uh, she met our Anton Iansha. Uh, so I think the movie is uh, quite interesting and you can see it on your own a bit later. So, uh, of course, it's important that you do all the historic fact, fact completely and it helps you if you have the proper costume as well, as you can see. I think you will love it. And uh, the official link to this video, I think might be somewhere here, yeah. And at the end, I will just say, uh, please participate our full educational beekeeping, bee tourist courses on beekeeping academy of Slovenia in July. And of course, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and check our website. We would like to thank you. And sending greetings from Apis Medifera Karnica too. This is one cute little beauty. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you for your precious time. Of course, this webinar will be available on our website and YouTube channel. And now it's time for your questions. We will try to answer. But of course, you are more than welcome to send us an email and ask us whatever you want. We will try to do our best. So maybe we have some questions, not yet. OK. If we didn't answer your questions, well, see you on the web. Bye-bye.